Hi guys and welcome down to Improve My Golf and today's four hole vlog is going to be looking into shots that you wouldn't normally play. So for example, if I just show you the golf course at the moment, just show you the trees, it is blowing a hoolie. Actually as soon as I say that they kind of die down a little bit, but it's blowing a really strong wind today. So say for example 100 yards out would normally hit a little 54 degree I'm maybe going to approach it today with like a little punchy 9 iron shot or for example if we're around about 150 yards in I maybe approach with like a 5 iron or a 6 iron kind of half shot pitch shot sort of shot. So just to help you to kind of learn that there's different shots out there that you can use it's always it's not always about hitting full shots I'm going to kind of hit my tee shots I'm really going to focus there on trying to hit fairways Last two rounds of golf I've hit two fairways in the whole of the last two rounds of golf or with the driver so it's not been very good from that respect so today I'm going to practice in the driver off the tee so I'm going to be quite far back off the tee boxes so I do have to hit driver and then from into the, hitting into the greens maybe as you can hear it's blowing a gale really strong so I'm going to try and hit some different types of shots that I wouldn't normally play. Enjoy! Okay so first hole is a 409 yard par 4 long hole Especially coming straight back into the wind so if I can find the fairway I'm going to have quite a long second shot in but again I'm going to be using a different type of club that I would normally use to try and pull the shot off so really going to try and add more shots to my armoury so if I do get in situations like this I'm confident enough not to kind of grab that first club that comes to mind. Wind strong into and off the left so I'm going to keep this down the right to the left side. So normally a 162 club would be an 8 iron. I'm going to hit a little 6 iron, so I'm going to try and take a 6 iron to the middle of my stand and just half swing it. You know what? I've changed my mind. I'm going to go to a 5 iron. This wind is powerful. So I'm middle of my stand, just a short swing back and just try and feed the, foot, feed the club back through the ball. I'm not going to try and hit it too hard. If I hit it too hard, it'll create more backspin and the wind can potentially lift it up. See the camera shaking a lot, that's how windy it is. Okay, so it's not finished in such a bad position. Now, I would normally pull the 58 degree out straight away here and pop it up into the air. I need to learn to practice a bit more with a 54 degree, just so I don't have to hit the ball as hard. With a 58 degree, obviously you're gonna get more height, therefore you generally need a bit more backswing and a bit more carry to hit towards your target. So I'm gonna, I've got a 54 degree here, I'm just gonna start to practice chipping with that a little bit more today. We are chipping into the breeze, again this will have a big effect on the outcome of the shot, it will make the ball not travel as far as normal but it will also help with stopping the ball as well so it can be quite aggressive with a 54 degree. Coming out of the rough it's going to encourage a little bit more roll so I've got a little bit less control than normal but I'm going to kind of play this very conventionally now, so I'm going to keep this ball in the middle of my stance, I'm not going to really use too much hands, I'm just going to allow the hips to rotate through the ball through impact. It's going to land this around about halfway onto the green. Came out a little bit hot. I actually landed that a little bit too far. The bounce really didn't help too much and it's not in a great position to be fair but I'll give the putt a go. That can sometimes be the problem with chipping out of the rough. The ball just generally Grass gets in between the ball and the grooves and the ball just kind of shoots out a little bit more uncontrollably but like I said this ball did land a little bit too far up the green whether it's whether I swung too far or the grass got in the way of the ball. So I'm going to end this just outside the left edge, it's downhill left to right. Stroke's been very very good, it's all about if I get the right line and pace. Oh, 
moved, moved a lot, didn't it? So it's an opening bogey. A little bit frustrating. I think the chip, the chip killed it really. Hit a fairway, which is a big positive. I think I chose the right club in the five iron. I was only really towards the front edge of the green, just a tiny bit right. Chip wasn't the best shot. Right, so the second hole, 360 yard par four. This is obviously not drivable, but it can get very close. So this will give me a perfect opportunity to try out my tee shots and also my approach shot with a 54 degree. Downwind, so I can get very close if I get the right strike. You'll notice the tee markers look very odd. It's because the, the hole's pushing you down the, down the right side, so it's really difficult to kind of get your head around. Just got to try and ignore that. Aim down the, down the centre of the fairway with a little bit of a draw, gives me the perfect angle. Ah. Driver kills me again. So I've dragged it to the left hand side, I've held onto the club, rotated the hands a bit too fast through impact. Four's just started left side of the fairway and drawn into the left hook. So again, this is what kills me on the golf course. I'm not going to have enough control of my approach or where I really should be eyeing up a birdie. Right, so this is my view at the moment. So it's 94 yards to the flag which is looking like it's on the back of the green. So actually I've got a decent angle into the ball, although it wasn't the, the shot that I wanted to play. I've not got a bad lie either, to be honest. So I'm back out with a 54 degree, 94 yards. And the wind, really important to take the wind in consideration, especially on days like today. The wind is kind of coming across and down. I think it's gonna play a bit of a role as the ball's in the air, because with a, with a wedge, the ball's not got a very strong penetrating flight. So I think the wind will play an effect. I'm going to aim this just to the right of the hole and it's going to break from right to left anyway with the green it looks anyway from this sort of distance. It's around about three quarter, um, 54 degree. Again, I don't want to be too aggressive. I'm going to hit the ball up nicely into the air and get some, get some stop. Moving in the wind. Oh, that looks tasty. Although I'm very happy with the outcome of the shot, had I been on the fairway, I would have had a little bit more control of the ball once it landed. Don't forget when the when it's downwind and you're hitting downwind into a green, it's going to take the spin off. And it's certainly not going to spin as much, so it will release a little bit more. Also, as well, coming from the hole, it kind of looks like it's downhill anyway. With that wind, so I'm happy to be on the correct side of the slopes and putting back up the hill, and I've got a really good chance of birdie. Hit it, that's perfect as well. Just before I introduce this hole, let's all take a moment to, to uh, enjoy this guy's divot that is aiming at those trees wow that is tasty nice well done pal this is the stroke one hardest hole on the golf course and it definitely requires a driver so i'm not sure what you were hitting 434 yards long one this is a beast especially today into the breeze i say breeze wind we need all of this we need a perfect one down the fairway Right. Hey. The bunker up the left. Right, you know what? I'm a self-proclaimed beast. Cleared the cleared the bunker. Actually, you know what? I didn't just clear it. I'm like 40 past no, well, 30 past. Really happy with that tee shot, and I'm even more happy to be coming into the green from a fairway. That is a double bonus. Okay, so we've 170 to the flag. Normal shot here would be, it's normal shot would be 170 yards up the hill would be a kind of a smooth seven iron really, it wouldn't be all of it, but a smooth seven iron. I had, I managed, when I was going down the previous hole, I managed to have a look 
at where the flag is. So the flag is right on the back edge. So we can allow for 20 yards even to the front edge of the green. So we've got 150 to the front, 170 to the flag. So if we play this around about 160, it would now make it a really hard eight iron if there was no wind. If I hit a hard seven iron from here, I'd go over the back and I'd short side myself coming back to the flag. So it's really important that we miss this in the right place. Obviously, we're gonna be trying to pin seek as much as we possibly can, but we've gotta make sure that if we don't put it within an inch, we've got a very, a much easier third shot. Now, for this particular hole, yeah, it's that, good to breathe. It's actually 10 yards longer than what we hit on the first hole. And I hit a five iron, but I felt like I hit it a bit too soft. So I'm gonna do the same shot again. But based on my previous shot, I feel like I'm, I can be a little bit more aggressive because I was a tiny bit short and also I'm a little bit more uphill. So but I'm still gonna try and play this at around about 160, 165. Get a nice favorable kick as well but hardest hole in the golf course this is a this is a tricky this is a hard shot it's a, the hardest hole for a reason 117 for a par four is a long way i'm going to put the five irons in the middle of my stance and put my hands forward towards my left eye i'm just going to hit a nice easy swing in terms of speed but a longer than the last one try and control the ball flight Pured it. Be right. Oh, I actually think that's a little short, you know. That's hard to tell. I think I'm a touch short of the green. Okay, so again, looking at the outcome of the shot, I am back. I am in line with my ball. So it's actually just kind of buried in there. It's not the best lie in the world. But if I turn around and pan around. I'm actually in the middle of the green, so I got my yardage absolutely perfect because obviously with it not being rough, it would have rolled up the green a little bit more as well. I've not got the easiest chip in the world, I'm not going to lie. I've got a bit of green to work with here. It's the, in my favor, it's, oh God, that is windy. In my favor, it is very windy and uphill. Going against me is the lie. Guys, let's pray that this camera can stand the wind because it's already fallen and it's already smacked my screen. So any more damage and it won't be fantastic. I think the club got a little bit snagged up onto the, into the grass there. It just came out a little bit hotter than I would have uh, A, anticipated and B would have liked. Right guys, this could be another bogey. Just shows you how much more difficult it is playing in such heavy winds. You're, you're trying to allow for your club selection, which I think I've done quite well. But I've only marginally been off with my, with my, with my accuracy. And I suppose if you want to kind of, kind of criticize my second shot a little bit more, with the flag being this side of the green, You've got to be missing over there, haven't you, to give yourself a little bit more room to work with. So that's my criticism there. I got my yardage perfect. I think I got the club right, I hit the shot perfect. Just missed it on the wrong side. I was talking about missing it too long and too short. I missed it too far to the side. Right, let's see if we can tap one in. soft again the greens look very fast disappointing okay last hole to go let's see if we can finish on a birdie's a par three it's a strong downwind for a par three as well interesting shot selection right fourth hole we've got actually got one six seven to the flag i've got a nine iron because it's strong downwind and it's slightly downhill as well I don't often use a tee. Uh, that's just because I like to feel the strike a little bit more. I'm generally quite confident with the ball striking with the irons. So 167 to the flag, strong downwind and slightly off the left. The position you want to be really is on, obviously on the flag to an inch, 
otherwise we're going to miss it just slightly right so we've got an uphill putt as you can tell i kind of know the golf course quite well so i can allow for this sort of thing that's something that you should do if you do play your home golf course and you start to think about where you need to miss it makes a huge difference had i missed a little bit better on one and three we might still be level par Seven is normally a smooth eight. I'm actually going to hit a smooth nine. I don't think. I certainly don't think I need all of this. Be on the flag. Yeah, really happy with that outcome. Really nice swing. Really smooth. Right, we'd all love to see a birdie to finish. Well, me especially. It's up the hill, it's left to right, it's a nice length of putt. It's also not such a tricky one, it's an easiest one to read, I think, depending on how it comes out. Uphill always means you can be a little bit more confident. It's not really downhill too much after the hole either, so I don't need to be too worried about the one coming back. It's going to be quite aggressive. Worst case, it's going to miss a, couple, a foot or so on the other side. Again, I think. I'm going to go just outside the left edge. Wheel break. It will break. Just because there's no one behind me or no one around me, I'm going to give myself another, another attempt. I really thought that was going to break. Go a bit straighter at the hole. Doesn't break that much. Doesn't break that much. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. Something a little bit different. Kind of forcing you on your practice rounds to use clubs that you wouldn't normally use. I think I've been kind of forced into it anyway with today's weather conditions. But just go out on the golf course. Chip with something you wouldn't normally chip with whether it be a pitching wedge or even a seven iron chip and run and that way I'm very sure you'll find shots that you wouldn't normally play which in the future can really save you shots also we spoke a little bit about course management so talking about where to miss so it's important that we're not going to always put it very close but if we aim somewhere else that's not going to be in too much danger like you don't want to short side yourself you want to leave it into the fattish part of the green so you've got a putt to go towards the flag then you again you're going to lower your scores just by thinking smart join me in some future vlogs where we're going to be talking about how to dissect par fives and make some pars guys thanks very much for watching please do subscribe to the channel we're really close to 15,000 subscribers so i really really appreciate it if you could subscribe again gives us the opportunity to come out and play these wonderful courses and bring you lots more tips